Five minutes to allow me to come in. I believe that they are coming in. Uh, we will start around ten zero five. It's okay for all of you. So, if you have any friends that you think that are interested in this topic, please do invite your friends. And for those students who are supposed to join this morning session, uh, do me a favor to remind them. Not sure, maybe some of them are still sleeping. <laughs> okay. We have more coming in than 40 plus now.
check uh, who do we have here um, I think I think I do see some from the industry joining us All right so um, good morning everyone welcome to ICIW 2023 okay so uh, I hope that uh, everyone is doing fine in this uh, very hot weather Okay, the good news is uh, we do see some uh, downpour, rain, rain coming for the past few days. So um, I hope that this morning, okay, we are all excited because uh, we are at the last day okay, of ICIW. Right, so allow, my, uh, allow me to introduce myself. I am uh, Dr. Pinil Ang Sun En. Right, so I'm the senior lecturer in uh, FTK okay, uh, in the civil engineering department, civil engineering department. So, um today i'll be the moderator for slot seven okay so uh before i introduce our very special guest with us uh, i would like to also take this time to welcome the guests we have okay apart from the students of uh, jtka let us welcome some uh, guests with uh, guests from the industry right uh, we also have uh, our guests from college vocational setapa Okay, uh, Puan Siti Safia, hello. <laughs> okay, so and also of course all our dear lecturers, I'm not sure how Ketun Jabatan is around, okay, Dr. Kamara Aini, and the rest of uh, our dear students. Okay, so welcome once again, and I hope that you are all geared up, you are ready. Okay, so um, even if you want to grab a cup of coffee or tea, please do so. Okay, because I tell you to this light is memang power and all right, so you have to be very ready because um it is I was when I looked through the slide I was like wow I also have to there's so much for me to learn today okay so uh, let me uh please give me the opportunity to introduce our guest speaker today all right um T S Kumaran right so he is uh T S Kumaran brings with him twenty years of experience in project management right and nine years in BIM KBIM he has been greatly involved in providing BIM services to major projects around the country and driving its adoption in the construction industry right so uh, major projects like all we, uh, we know MRT projects okay so you know these are the major projects in Malaysia right and he is uh, he has overseen uh, two separate teams of four consultants okay each individually handling project portfolio management solutions right uh you know oracle primavera and hp ppmc and design engineering solutions okay which is autodesk to provide both pre-configured and customized solutions to clients okay so mainly bina is a uh, consultant okay beam consultant and a project management consultant right and as the general manager for bina the company's focus has been to provide end-to-end -end solutions covering all stage, stages of a construction project's life cycle. Okay, so it's an overall project life cycle. And with more than 50 projects, 50, okay, 50 projects accomplished within 14 years. Okay, TS Kumaran is also a member of Association of Project Planner Malaysia. Okay, so, uh, but I would like to have my own version of uh, introduction. Okay, <laughs> right, because uh, we have been, uh, Partners, okay, long partners uh, since back 2018, right? Um, I will proudly say that uh, Bina has been so uh, committed to uh, being our industry partner, okay, with FTK. So uh, with my own words, I would like to just uh, introduce a bit about Bina and TS Kumaran. Okay, so uh, since 2018, okay, we have, uh, we are very blessed with their professionalism and willingness to mentor us in our BIM walk and BIM journey, All right? So behind the commitment of every team is the commitment of the leader, All right? So uh, we are very thankful that uh, today we have uh, T.S. Kumaran with us and his team, All right? And one of his right-hand men, uh, the, <laughs> the BIM manager, All right? T.S. Mama Hafiz. I think many of you also know him, right? Okay, so um, 
they are in our midst this morning. So uh, I would like to just ask you guys that if you can guess, lah, just pop in the figure, how many students we have managed to certify over the years. Uh, we have managed to, this past few years. How many students we have been we have managed to certify in Autodesk Revit? Can you guess? Just pop up in the in the text box just to make sure that you guys are listening. <laughs> okay, the those who get the right figure later at Blanja Makan. I'm not sure whether uh Bina even realized how many they have certified because already a few years, right? You want to guess? No, no, doctor. No, right? Anybody just put in a figure. How many students do you think we certified? Students plus staff plus industry practitioners. Uh, we certified, you know, Pansi Jelan, uh, Autodesk BIM. Okay, siapa nak teka? Cuba. Okay, Daniel. Uh, Daniel was part of them. Part, uh, last, last, last year. 350. Okay, good try. Anyone else? Anyone else? It's a not three three number. If a three digit, it can buy four. four if four D, four digit, it can buy four D already. Anyone else? Anyone else? So the tips is a three figure lah. <laughs> Only Daniel. Eh? Anyone else want to guess? Okay. So let me just uh, review the number. Eh? For the past, let me think. Twenty one. For the past three four years, ah. Eh? Um. Together with Bina, we have uh, certified 445 students. Okay, students or uh, participants are 445. Right, so with this number, you can already see how committed Bina is with us and how much they have been contributing in terms of knowledge transfer. Right, so today we have the privilege to invite uh, the big boss, K of Bina, right, who is also a significant pillar to the success of FTK. All right. Okay. So we have uh, T.S. Kumaran who will speak to us on Joe Beam. Okay. The title very special. Joe Beam, trend towards sustainability, sustainable infrastructure. Okay. So let's put our hands to welcome T.S. Kumaran. Right. T.S. Kumaran, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Panel. Okay. Thank you very much for the entire FTK team and UTHM to give us this opportunity and continuous support. And uh, Whoever the attendees, regardless whether it's students, lecturers, tutors, and also industry practitioners, if you look at it to organize not only a webinar, an event like this, it takes a lot of preparation, planning, and also sacrifices in order to make this happen. People may be thinking that it's only online, just give a link that is done. But to create the link, to organize people to be on time, to organize the content to be there, and last minute, there's no technical hiccups and all of these preparations, right? I really have to thank uh, UTHM and all the members who's involved in these preparations and making this successful. Okay, thank you very much for that. And uh, together with myself, yes, uh, my great right-hand man, uh, uh, T.S. Uh, Mohamed Hafizaini, so he's the BIM manager for Bena Initiative. And uh, not about only being uh, participating in any of these uh, UTHM's requirement or the needs, but it also carries passion in terms of what do we want to achieve? What do we uh, look at when the industry, the student comes out to the industry, not about, okay, let's get some certification, let's get some uh, topics and then let them come out and then struggle through. So no. So I think to a certain extent, uh, how UTHM have craft in terms of the industry practitioner to come in, involved during academic time itself, it gives a very fruitful success because the moment they go out, they will not have a cultural shock, number one, and they will not be panicked with, oh, these are the information was not taught, I'm not aware, I do not know, excuse me. So this gives a bigger opportunity and to provide quality students that the industry needs. So that part, myself and together with my entire team from Bena Initiative, we need to really appreciate and respect the effort that UTHM have put in, especially to my contacts, the Dean and also Dr. Beno. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so without further ado, let me go into the slide. So since the time was given to me, it's too short, two hours. So I have to cut down my 750 slides to become 50 slides actually, otherwise it's supposed to take- 750 slides. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me just share. Okay. 
So just for a checking, everybody able to see my slide? Yes. yes any right. response, thumbs up or any response? So just ah. to make sure that they are engaged ah. and uh, it, it, it is like uh, it's two way communication. So I don't want to be a one way communication that I just present. So whoever is listening, just taking notes or just look at it or they're busy on other work. So the reason this two hour session is important because it is not about the student learning from the industry practitioner. Even people like us want to learn from the student. What is their expectation? What do they expect when they come out in the working industry? Okay, so we will still have the Q&A at the end. That is one part. But during any of these slides, when we go through, please feel free to stop me and ask questions. Okay, so do not stop. So if I'm not, be, not able to answer, my right hand man is there ready with, wow. uh, with all the information. And if you are not able to handle it today, we will definitely come back to you guys. Okay. Okay. So the topic that uh, we have planned for this time, for this year, 2023, ICIWFTK 2023, is specifically on GeoBeam and trend towards sustainability infrastructure. So it's very much related to infrastructure implementation and usage. Okay, so just before going further, I think uh, Dr. Penel have also addressed who am I and all that. So I think this slide we can skip. So just about Bena initiative, just to give you high level, because you also need to know, yeah, this person is speaking, but he's coming from where? Yeah, Bena initiative, but what does Bena initiative do? Okay, so we are very much focused into architectural, engineering, and construction solution, and also we provide services to the industry. Since 2009, we have started Bena Initiative. We were the uh, BIM pioneer in the country, where at that time when we started BIM, people were telling, we are far from Singapore. Why are we wasting time with BIM? Just stick to project management, which is my forte. But things change because within project management, project management is still the key concept and process needed. But the subset of project management is where BIM, uh, integrated delivery, all of this is coming in. Okay. So this is where we are involved and we are involved all the way from end to end, which means from conceptual phase all the way up to facility management or asset management of any life cycle project. Okay, so our focus always never change. Okay, if I'm too fast, please stop me too. Okay, our focus never change from day one we have started is always helping the Malaysian AC industry players to gain productivity and efficiency. And how? through digitalizing. So when you digitize, people always say, oh, take the paper, automate. That is only stage one. So we also need to review back the processes and improve the processes. And uh, what do we do? So we have platforms and tools where we provide project control, start from the uh, planning stage, design stage, and we have a single platform as the uh, tools or uh, software that we are able to manage and uh, exchange information based on various parties at various stage of construction. And we also provide end-to-end -end, uh, solution. When we say end-to-end, -end, which means from the planning, which is the geospatial information systems coming into or survey information coming into, all the way up to maintaining and managing the assets, the home that we live, the infrastructure that we go and travel, the roads and highways. Okay, so our offering to the industry, we have six pillar. And these six pillar, we are very focused what we provide because we have dedicated team to deliver this because you cannot mix all of this into one specific team. So GIS for construction, which is geospatial information system, how construction looks at map, survey, uh, uh, scanning, like LIDAR scannings and all that, and how that can be taken over. So today's session is very much into GIS combining together with BIM, okay? Very soon, I'll be showing that slide. The second one is project and performance management. I believe towards your final years of your student career, you'll be also looking at project management as one of the topic where you need to have a baseline program, manage the progress, reports, the delay. So all of this is captured in the project and performance management. Number three is building information modeling. Some of you have attended the Arabic training, Navis work training, that is very much component of building information modeling. And then we have contract and document management. So contract and document management is the challenge every organization in the country facing. 
including the uh, uh, facility providers or, or institutions. Why? Because everybody likes to print, likes to read, likes to feel the paper. So that have increased the space to be utilizing and keeping and filing all of this document. So that have pushed very much into mm -hmm. when you want to search a document, when you want to send a document, you do not know where you can. It's always happened when you are looking for that, you cannot find. Okay. And uh, the last, not, the second last is actually the field management where you can have a good technology, good pl platform or process in the HQ or the main office. But the moment you go to the field, you realize people are carrying drawings, paper and pen because they are hardcore field workers. So now what we have done, we have also brought mobile technology tools to the field so that they are able to work on this directly. And finally is the facility management, which you are able to manage any facility, regardless of building or infrastructure. Okay. All right, so coming back to our topic today and also GeoBeam. So, I'll be explaining also what is GeoBeam in combination of geospatial information system and also building information modeling. So the first key here, it's about how a marvelous merger of GIS, geospatial information system, and BIM for evolving infrastructure development. So people have looked at where are the value, what is the return of investment, what is the benefit of having GeoBeam in place. So what is GeoBeam then? So if you look at GeoBeam, so first is a GIS technology just to manage and sharing geographical information system to deliver information across entire organization. So what we are looking at the chart here, so the chart that you're looking at on the right hand side provides information such as maps and geospatial data, which means the land, the owner of the land, the size of the land. So that is still information. So most of the time, all of this we are aware, but we do not know whether it's kept in Excel format or a Word document or a text format kept somewhere on the phone or on the machine or off the desktop. So these are where it is all been gathered with the cloud capability. So number two, you are looking at 3D visualization. So the moment you look at the land, you also would like to know, whether it's the <clears throat> water a retained land, whether it's a swampy land, whether the hillside. So this is where the 3D visualization comes in. And then you're also looking at impact and risk assessment. The moment you look at any of this land, what kind of impact are we looking at? And also the risk assessment we are looking at. Then further, we are going into monitoring and reporting because each of this information, you still need to keep and manage and monitor and also do reporting. Then you take it further, planning and standards and decision making. So all this I'm referring on the right hand side graphics here. So planning standards and decision making, because the moment you have access to all of this information from the geospatial information system, you're able to plan further. So most of the time, what happens? People come up with a survey, 2D CAD drawing, and the 2D CAD drawing is passed to the architect or the CNS engineers. They're supposed to be working on the 2D version they will not have data on the same drawing with regards to how much of earth I need to cut, how much of slope I need to do, where the roads is going to be. They will not have that detail on the same piece of paper. But what happened with GIS, you are able to go further into that detail without referring to third uh, party uh, uh, tools or utilities or even document. You are looking at the same single place. So this allow decision-making process to be quicker and faster. And then stakeholder and client engagement. The moment you present to the owners or the developers or even the project management consultant, they need to visualize. They may not be from the engineering background. They could be investor. They could be financial person who has the money. So then they'll be looking at, okay, what are you going to build? Show me. So the moment you're showing with a printer 2D uh, drawing and saying that, oh, this is where the uh, building is going to be. This is where the road is going to be. Okay. That's all. But the moment you have almost completing the uh, construction, then they'll come back and say, oh, this is not what I thought when you was explaining to me. Because he visualized in a different way. You are explaining from your own version of visualization because all are looking at 2D information on a map. Right? 
and then remote sensing and imagery. So remote sensing and imagery came uh, to brought a bigger value because you're able to capture with all the technology of drone and remote sensing of the exact uh, 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 exact uh, facilities that's happening on site. So you're able to see that, okay, what's happening today? What have they completed today? What are the things happening on site specifically at this uh, date or time? So you're able to capture that. And then you also have the uh, beam and cat data where currently the Joe's partial information system allows integration, which you don't have to think about. I'm taking beam data, but when I send to GIS, oh, sure, data loss somewhere. So there is no question of data loss anymore. The reason being is the uh, founder or the brand or the organization behind Joe's partial information system is called ESRI. And in Malaysia, you have ESRI Malaysia Sendrian Berhad, ESRI. And the uh, technology and brand behind building information modeling is Autodesk, which most of you guys do not know Autodesk. Always they know AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT. So these are only the software brands, but the, uh, the company, the organization that runs this is called Autodesk. So both of them, that means Esri and also Autodesk work hand in hand from the US all the way to any part of the world. So they have established integration interoperability and exchanging information without data loss. So you don't have to worry about if I'm working on a GIS, am I telling that my data will be lost when it's pushed to beam? So there's no, that that question is no more because the technology is matured enough in order to handle this. Okay. So the most important part GI has, so the bold here, always we want to make sure that this is the key takeaway. What is GIS? JS helps to improve efficiency, communication, decision making, and also collaboration across teams, discipline, and expertise. Because you're able to exchange this information, like what I was mentioning, you visualize something and you're explaining. The owner visualize something and accepting. When it comes to towards tail end of construction, this is not what I want. That is the biggest problem that we don't want to face. And finally, JS also has location intelligence enabled. Okay where to achieve better outcomes and stand out from the peers. Okay, so this is what GIS, Geospatial Information System or Geographical Information System all about. Any question? You can always type in the chat or you can always uh, raise up your hand, not an issue. So if I don't have any question, I think uh, Dr. Penel, out of 85, maybe all of them already move into their other task. <laughs> just to, okay. So just to give a uh, further detail of uh, JS, the Geospatial Information System, and what is the approach they have? So if you look at the right-hand side graphic, you are able to see layer of layers information is captured, and all these layers of information is used to do development, whether you are doing survey, whether you are doing soil investigation, whether you are doing designing of foundation or even the superstructure, all of this based on this key information. Anything goes wrong from the geospatial information system data capture, you have to wait. Time will tell you what are the impact towards the constructed structure that's sitting above the ground. It's very, very important. In fact, today people will be telling, people will be telling city like uh, Kuala Lumpur, how come we have uh, uh, flood and all that. So all this goes back to the planning and also the population. So we never plan to have this area to be overpopulated or based on certain number of population. So the expansions, that's why the new township, all of these key elements is put into place when it comes to planning. Nobody will imagine that, okay, we will have 32 million population. But today we do not know in 10 years time what will be the number increased to, but we have to put this into our planning and preparation. So the geographic approach is essential addressing world's greatest challenge. Number one is actually you're looking at creating the future that we want to see requires the thoughtful work of architectural engineering and construction, plus the geospatial information systems professionals collaborating closely with all the internal and external stakeholders at their works impacts and their work impacts. And then you're also looking at the geographic approach user science and collaboration through GIS 
to address the environmental, which is the key today, ESG also coming in, economic, and then uh, social impacts, and also for the sustainability issues. Because the moment it comes to the sustainability, it's a key and big differentiator. So you have to ensure whatever has been designed, whatever has been procured, whatever has been constructed is sustainable. Okay, so this is two simple slides just to give you what is geospatial information system or geographical information system and what is the approach. So key, simple, you are taking map equivalent to put in our mind, map equivalent information with data that you can utilize and you are putting it together in layers so that you can analyze this data in layers as and when needed based on your project lifecycle needs. So what is BIM then? Oh, Baru Habis JS, this guy coming with BIM, that's another headache. Okay, building information modeling. So I'm trying to break it down and simplify so that you, because a lot of people, when they look at this, ah, this is something new. It's going to take ages for me to understand this. No, the moment we tell the brain, oh, it's going to be difficult. The brain will say, okay, my master already said difficult. Let's relax. So it's simple. Building information modeling, it's all about having a 3D model of a building. Okay. But the title of building information modeling, most of the time mislead everybody. Oh, it is only applicable for building. It never apply for infrastructure like uh, roads, rail, pipe layings. No. So the building mentioned here is all about construct. Okay. So building information modeling is applicable for building industry, vertical construction, and also horizontal construction, which is all the infrastructure. So the key here is all about to manage a digital data and an object. It is created to represent the components during design stage, procurement stage, construction stage, operation, and also the maintenance of the facility. So all you do is you are taking a, you are building a model object. And then from the model object, you include with physical and functional information, talks about thickness of the beam, okay, thickness of the wall, number of tiles, thickness of cement render, thickness of the uh, uh, bitumen that you use. So all of these come into the physical and functional information. Then you add on top of that process and then management as well as analysis. So this process is talking about someone submit a design. The design is looked on a 3D model representation. And from there, that's where the review comes in, the uh, comments comes in. And then from there, you also do analysis in terms of your load analysis, win uh, analysis, uh, all in the fluid analysis. So all the analysis can be done on the same 3D model. This is actually uh, acute as building information modeling. So as long as you have these three components with information, so people can say, oh, if I have a 3D model of a house, is it BIM? No. It's only a model. Without having the eye information, it does not represent BIM at all. So when you look at building information modeling, it's all about efficiently plan, design, construct, and manage building as well as infrastructure. So it has a minimal increase in upfront cost of about 2% to support optimized design. We lead on average to life cycle saving of about 20%. So again, this is based on the World Economic Forum report shaping the future of construction 2017. Okay, but the important here is by adopting or taking up BIM, does it give you saving? Does it give you value? Yes. And does the saving percentage is, is, is right to the decimal point to say, if someone say 2%, okay, that's, the, that's it. If someone say 20%, that's it. No. This varies from every organization. The reason being is, it is not about a technology piece only. It's also about people, process, and technology. So it is not about buying a software, sending someone for training, switch on the software, the magic happens. No. So you need to make sure that the tools is in place. People are using the tools in the right way. And people are using that information, that process from the tools for their decision making. So for example, 
the key for BIM is always clash detections and coordination. You would like to avoid clashes physically when you are constructing on site. So when you want to avoid that, there's a clash report. If nobody looks at the clash report and nobody wants to address the clash report and resolve the clashes, it means nothing on BIM. So again, it is also after the clash is identified, after the clash is resolved, what's next? Are we also quantifying using the BIM in terms of quantity takeoff? Are we also looking at visualization to ensure that the tile color that choose, the paint that's chosen, the roof structure chosen is decided based on this model? So if people are not using these tools to make this kind of decision, it still again will bring down the cost going to be higher, but the value going to be lower because you did not materialize or you did not even realize these kind of values. Okay, so when it comes to building information modeling, the whole world looks at maturity level. So this is called as BIM maturity roadmap. To say that, okay, BIM is what? With a 3D plus there's information that I can manage. But which level? Where are, where are we? Okay, so today, Malaysia, we are at level two, full collaboration. But we are all working on the open BIM concept, which is level three including the government agency and also the private. So just to understand simple, level zero, low collaborations is all about 2D CAD. I do my work, the other consultant do their work, the contractor do their work. Finally, when it's completed, they all say, I didn't refer to your drawing because I thought this was the latest version. And you go construct, everything is done. So the damage is always there. And level one, we are looking at partial collaboration where you already using a 3D model coming in, but the, the 3D is, even though it's combined with the 2D, you have information that you can always exchange and manage. That is level one, which is partial collaboration, which can be through email, through Dropbox. This is how they do. But when you move to level two, is the full collaboration where the project team is using the 3D modeling to develop their project and produce information. So it's no more reverse engineering. Some they'll do just, just take the 2D CAD. Ah, that I think is still faster. This consultant doesn't have the experience. So they take the 2D, they build the 3D. But in level two, you're not working on the 2D CAD drawing anymore. The moment you have a thought, you have a plan, you start to build on 3D. It's like, for example, any of the students come up with a plan. They always write on a piece of paper. Plan in terms of scheduling, they write on a piece of paper. Now, the movement is rather than writing on a piece of paper straight away, you log into Microsoft Project or you go into Excel or you go into Primavera straight away, you put in the activity duration and start to leak. That is where the level two comes into play. So it's using 3D modeling as the tool directly. And with the 3D models and the project data is shared and become common, they use IFC as the common. Okay, so this way you are able to get more value, which is Fourth dimension, which is time. Three dimension is the model itself. Fourth dimension is time. So you're able to also analyze how much time it's going to take for me to complete this construction. And based on the monthly or quarterly, what will be achieved based on this time frame? And then fifth dimension, which is cost, you are also able to analyze cost based on the B model itself. So this is where the level two is today. And level three is where technology agnostic you don't have to depend on any single technology, which is called as an open BIM, a common shared model for a unified BIM model, and it's used via a cloud-based environment. So everything's going to be on the cloud. Okay, so we will have only access and connection point to the cloud. So eventually, when you imagine this cloud and cloud and cloud has become huge, and sometimes people ask, where is this cloud then? Because the hosting, whether it's hosted from the AWS, uh, you know, Azure, Microsoft, so where is hosted? Is it US? Is it Singapore? Is it Malaysia? So very soon, Malaysia also will have the hosting uh, environment, right? So this is how it has been always questioned. And anyone who is involved in the project has an access to it and is able to add information according to the role in the project. If I'm a project manager, so I'm adding this. If I'm a project engineer, I'm adding this along with the 4D, 5D. And there's a sixth dimension, which is more into the building life cycle management you're able to do also. 
quick question, uh, T.S. Kumaran, if you don't mind. Yep. Mm. Um, I, I believe that many of the students, we will be uh, wondering where are we right now? In yes. Uh, Malaysia, yeah. At level okay. one, two? No, what? we are at level two now. Okay. Yes, especially the government bodies have moved into level two. Yeah. And most of the developers and contractor, it's already working on level one and moving towards level two. I see. Yes. And today, if you ask out of 100 tenders, 98 to 99 tenders will have BIM requirement. Yeah, I heard almost 100%, right? Yeah. Yes, almost 100%. Whether the requirement is clear or simplified, that is always the question, but the requirement is always there. Mm. Yeah. That's the good news. Singapore will be at level two or three. three is it? Uh, Singapore is working on level three now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think there was also some question on the... There are questions popping up already. Not yes. Do you want to address them later or no? Ken, while we are here, I think it's good. Regarding the JS, how does JS link with IoT, for example, by using Arduino? Okay, so so just to address, let me see. Oh, yeah, that's the first, yeah, that's the first question. So JS linking to IoT does not matter any brand or any device as long as it sits on the cloud or on premise in terms of capturing data from the sensors that always can be integrated because today any software or platform in the world has an application programming protocol called API interface. Mm -hmm. So they can always pull and push information. So it does not matter which device, but as long as the sensors picks up this information, stored on a file, whether it's a TXT file or HTML file, you are able to always integrate and communicate. Okay, so that's on the JS. The other question, how does BIM software address the challenges of collaboration and coordination among different disciplines involved in projects such as architects, engineers, and contractors? Okay, this is a very good question. This is where the level two comes in, which means they always use a platform called Common Data Environment. Today, whenever people work on BIM, they always think that, okay, CDE, do you have CDE? Okay, let's forget about BIM, let's forget about CDE. In the common conventional way, even 20 years back, people talk about communication, collaboration. So CDE is nothing new. It is the same thing instead of communicating through emails and all that, because those days technologies, advancement, advancement was not there. Mm -hmm. So it's all about communication and collaboration. But today, why it is termed as common data environment? Because an architect, when they work on a design, it's visible and accessible by other related engineers now. And it is on the cloud. And it's a live model. That is the beauty. So you don't have to wait. Okay, Mr. Architect, once you complete, please email to me here. Yeah? Or please drop it so that I'm able to access and check it. No. It's a live model. While they're working, you can work on your civil side, structural side, and many side. Okay, so this is how the BIM softwares have address. And in the era of development, Autodesk have came in a bit too late in terms of coming up with the collaboration because they are working very much into the native file or the native way of 3D model building up. But today, they have already have tools in place or platform in place called BIM360, which is now renamed as Autodesk Construction Cloud, that you are able to do these collaborations and coordinations. Okay. And the next question is, uh, what are some of the barriers of BIM to industry implementation? The first barrier here, the crystal clear visualization in terms of, would I get this benefit? Would I get this value? that is always the biggest barrier because it relates back to people, process, technology. These three components, it is not straightforward as you buy something, you have a feel, you test it, it works. Yes, I achieve. No. Here, because it's you have to depend on the people, then you have to depend on the process. Then once you have already put up the process, some people may add to the process and... <laughs> going with it some people say ah yeah i can do without this so they also move away from the process even the process already in place 
And this is common for any organization. This is the biggest barrier. And the second barrier is cost. The moment you look at BIM, or oh, ini mesti mahal. That's the first thing will come to their mind. It's going to be expensive. So the moment they say it's going to be expensive, in, in fact, I always ask, what, how do we define expensive? So the moment we go and ask ourselves that question, what is expensive? If I'm able to get the value out, like for example, the, the, uh, the uh, World Economic Report, 2% and 20%, that's the key. You are looking at 2% of your investment cost, but you're looking at a return of 20%. Allah, the world, 18% only, I minus off. But along the way, this ties back to the project value. If your project is 1 million, that is the number. If your project is 1 billion, the number is going to be bigger. Mm -hmm. And there's additional value uh, above and beyond of this ROI. Okay, so there's a key two challenges. And then CDE, Common Data Environment. Yes, example, Econex. That's correct. So in Malaysia, if you look at Common Data Environment, Autodesk Construction Cloud, where they use BIM Collaborate Pro at this moment, and also Autodesk Construction Cloud, and then Oracle acquired a product called Econex. So they can also do. And then Proco, which is a construction platform. Uh, these are the three main. Is there anything else? These are the three main, yes, that focusing on into the CD. Yeah, uh, sorry, one more is Isatir, which is actually from Poland. So Isatir also comes with the yeah, construction cloud also. Yep, uh, for the CD. Okay, so these are the main questions. So let me just move. So I don't want to take you guys for four hours or so, right? <laughs> okay. Any other questions on the beam maturity? No, for now. Okay, so now we already clear about what is GIS, Geospatial Information System or Geographic Information System and Building Information Modeling. So now we jump into GeoBeam. A combination of GIS and BIM, it is called as GeoBeam. Okay, so when you combine, so again, you'll be thinking, okay, dah lah, nak faham satu pun pening. Ini nak combine lagi, lagi lah pening. Okay, yes. But first, you need to see the value so you already see what's the value GIS provide. You already see what's the value that BIM provide just now at the high level. So now by combining this, right, using a GIS and BIM complement each other throughout the life cycle of the asset and facilities. Okay. So it gives you faster and also more efficient workflows because you don't have to think, oh, I don't have the map information or the survey information for me to make decision. Can you call the survey consultant? When you, can you call the planning consultant? You don't have to do that. So if you look at these two circles that's combining here, so on the AC delivery project and then capital portfolio management. So you're able to look at what is the market planning. So you're looking at regulation and permitting, provide services, monitoring and enforcement, and also revenue generation. So even though all of this is a big word, if you imagine back less Take a simple example, you have a piece of land. You want to construct something. So the piece of land needs information. You can take photo, but with the photo, it doesn't carry information. You do not know what is the size of the land. You do not know where is the soft material of the land, which is the hard material of the land. You do not know whether I need piling if I want to do building or not. So all of this information you gather by in piecemeal. And with GIS or GeoBeam, you are able to capture and incorporate this information into a platform, which is called GeoBeam. Now, in this platform, then you're going to move into the vertical construction or the vertical design. Okay, can I put three story building here? And then you are basing on the geo information data just now. So you are referring back to the GIS, right? So that data already on the same platform. Now, you're able to access and work on it. This way, I'm able to do preliminary, preliminary design and plan. I can also move into the detailed design component because I already have a good ground basic and the information and data. Then I can move into pre-construction in terms of procuring, tendering, or quotations, and all of this happens during the pre-construction. Then I can also move into construction because I've already designed in accordance to the ground conditions and information has been gathered through my survey. Now I'm constructing something that's going to stand there for many years. 
and then I also will go into the documentation. All of these also need documentation. So people need to know, okay, if I want to do renovation, if I want to do expansion or additional blocks, that if we, if, if we don't document that, no way people can do any expansion, right? So the Joo BIM comes into using BIM information in a comprehensive GIS system that helps improve decision-making, creates true digital twins for facility design, project delivery, and operation. So the digital twins in this context, you are looking at digitally what's going to be constructed later. What you're going to see with your physical eyes is seen on a digital. That is Joe Simple. Survey information coming in, your building information used on top of this on a single platform and your design, <coughs> uh, construct, and then operation. Okay. So just to take further on GeoBeam, the concept are the first step in building connected 3D scenario that can evolve into intelligent system, which is with the live data of added value and the real world systems are connected. So again, from the starting uh, of uh, my presentation, I'm talking about you have a piece of land, you're going to construct something. What happens? People have constructed something. Now you want to expand. Okay, and then even we go back to the first idea of you have a piece of land you want to construct, you definitely need utilities and services to make your constructed building or structure life. For example, you need telecommunication cable coming in, you need utilities <clears throat> such as <clears throat> power I, <clears throat> and then sewer, water pipe coming in. <clears throat> okay, and also you need to plan in terms of your discharge of going out from the building or from the facilities. So this is where the utilities of the existing constructed uh, <clears throat> model or facilities has to be captured on digital. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that provides intelligence on the real world. The moment you would like to construct. So what happens? If I don't have this information, what happens? So, okay, I just assume with this population around this area, I just going to build. So what happened? There could be a double story house previously. We have demolished and we have constructed 100 story building. How the 100 stories buildings utilities or services can be catered where the main cable coming to that plot, it's only for double story, which is occupied by maybe 10 people to 15 people. Now it's going to be a few hundred people. That's the massive thing will start. Then the road is not expanded. The telecommunication cable, people say, hey, I don't have line, I don't have signal, and all of this coming because of the poor planning of the existing data or information was not captured or used for the design or for the planning. Okay? So that's the real world data coming into the planning stage. And then it's also continued with investment of resources, which will help drive the development of digital twins that enables stakeholders to perform predictive analytics and then run simulation and make sustainable decision. These three things is key for any construction. And most of the students today in this uh, webinar is doing construction. So we always must keep in mind, we, are, we should be able to do some analytics. And without data, you cannot do any analytics. And then we need to run some simulation without having a 3D way of looking at things, no way you can do simulations. And then you also have to ensure it's sustainable for the real world and the real-time usage. Okay, so if you look at it, the graphic at the bottom, so you have landscapes, all your survey, uh, LiDAR data capture, drone image capture, topography, and then you're looking at building, okay? So every single building, doesn't matter whether it's a piling stage or constructor or it is already old building. So it doesn't matter. So there's a building which is structure. Then you also look at networks, networks of utilities, telecommunication, pipelines, road, highways, rail, all of this comes under the network category. And then you're also looking at cities. Currently, everybody's working on smart cities. Everyone wants everything to be smart. <laughs> so smart city. So all of this, right, it is called as digital twin and it's all integrated on a single platform. Towards the tail end of today's presentation, you realize 
You can do everything from GeoBeam, not only about model, not only about processing information. There's many things can be achieved, which it was not made known because previously the connection did not exist and the connection was poor in terms of managing interoperability. Today, it is so smooth as nobody knows that GIS comes from a different principles or product and BIM comes in a, from a different principle or product. <clears throat> so this is the key for GeoBIM. And if you look at GIS and BIM, the silos environment. So currently, this is what happening. So let me just say, so this is what currently happening most of the time. Oh, I'm on the BIM team. So we work. Surveyors guys, they will work on their own. As and when the designers need information, the surveyors will provide the information. That's about it. And the exchange of information is through email and now most, prob most probably through uh, WhatsApp. So they just take that and then work on it. But this is working on silos. But in the real world, with the GeoBeam's integrations, so it comes work and in hand. So I don't have to ask people, uh, can you email me this information? Can you provide me this detail? No, you have a full accessibility. And at the moment of real time, whatever changes that you're doing to your plan, to your design, it is reflected all around in the GeoBeam's platform. Okay, so nobody will construct something or plan something based on the old version of drawing, old version of data or document. Okay, so this is the GeoBeam's integrations architecture. So if you look at it simple, on the left-hand side is your BIM tools, which InfraWorks, Civil 3D, Revit, which is when it comes to Civil 3D and InfraWorks is for your infrastructure construction modeling. And then when it comes to Revit is all your building related, whether it's architectural, structural, or mechanical electrical modeling, okay? Then it is posted or pushed on the Autodesk Construction Cloud. And this Autodesk Construction Cloud already have a connector to work with ArcGIS. ArcGIS is the GIS, Geospatial Information Systems tool. ARC, GIS, ArcGIS. And then of course, they have ArcGIS Desktop, ArcGIS Enterprise, and then ArcGIS Pro. So don't get confused and go too deep, simple. Esri is the principal, is the brand. Under Esri, the product called ArcGIS. Okay. And all the uh, survey, uh, data capture, or maps, all of this information is stored on ArcGIS platform. And whatever the building information, civil information, your structures is stored on Autodesk Construction Cloud. In short, is ACC's environment. And these two is now connected. Okay. So it's interoperability, simple. And both sits on the cloud. Okay, again, now we're going to be uh, laughing, right? Which cloud are we referring? Don't worry. Forget about the cloud. Where is the cloud? But it's on the cloud and safe. <laughs> okay. So let me just take you guys uh, from the boring uh, talk that I've given maybe for almost, whoa, almost about 45 minutes. So I'll just run through one video to capture whatever I have defined from the GIS and B. Any way you look at it, designing and building for the future. Everybody can hear the sound and can see the picture, right? Yeah. Just to ensure, pre-confirming. <laughs> means taking a broader view to create smarter, sustainable infrastructure, cities and communities. Projects must be understood from more angles. At different scales. smarter tools that deliver a holistic perspective. So far, that's been difficult and expensive, with data cobbled together from many siloed sources. But now there's ArcGIS GeoBIM. For the first time, multiple systems are connected within one web app that integrates all your data. 
streamlining how projects get done using a location-based geographic approach that gives you the full picture. GeoBIM delivers a new foundation that connects Esri and Autodesk Cloud platforms. It brings together GIS and BIM data, reducing complex data handling and file conversion. You can easily link maps, digital models, and project information for a truly integrated and holistic approach. You can monitor progress to see what's happening where, pinpoint issues and safety concerns, and resolve them quickly. Projects can be easily shared for team collaboration and stakeholder decision-making. Plus, dashboards can communicate project status to everyone. You can even put your entire portfolio of projects into a single GeoBIM system. Across cities, states, countries, or customers. So you can keep an eye on each one while managing them as a whole. ArcGIS GeoBIM. Put your projects on the map. Understand the big picture and get the perspective you need to meet the challenges of the future. So I hope that uh, it's a clear understanding of uh, what this uh, GeoBeam can do. Okay, so now, after looking at all the building information modeling maturity, there's also GIS maturity model. So they also have level of uh, zero, level one, level two, to look at what are the data or information kept or put in place when it comes to the GIS. So if you look at the integrated integration between GIS and BIM, it's more into assessment of integrated geospatial information system and BIM maturity which is critical for mitigation of siloed project data because now it's going to be in silos, you are bringing it together. And benchmarking and evaluation of maturity will help project delivery teams to efficiently meet project requirements. Because most of the time, oh, GeoBeam, okay, as long as I bring uh, GIS information and BIM information together, that's done. But what level of information that you are having and how you're going to use this information makes a lot of difference, right? So based on this, what we look at is there's level zero, level one, and then level two and so forth and so forth. So if you look at maturity at level zero and level one, it just indicates the application of JS and BIM solution at a nascent stage where, okay, I'm just using in silos, nothing, not communicated. I do my stuff. I keep it to myself. You do your stuff. You keep it to yourself. As and when you require, I can send to you. That also I would think, should I give or not? Should I give or not, right? So this is where the level zero comes in. But at this level, the GIS and BIM data are mostly in silos and are utilized to assess project feasibility and assess on-site conditions and strategize project plan. That's it. And this information in level zero is lack of spatial data integration with BIM. But the 2D drafting or the drawings or even the hand sketch is utilized to generate schematic designs in the planning phase. It is still done. So you'll be thinking, okay, so if I, at level zero, can I still use for construction? You can, but someone have to go and hunt for information and have to visualize based on their past experience to put in and say that, oh yeah, I think this will work. So there's a lot of guesstimate need to be done because the information is not on the same platform that you're analyzing. Okay, that's at level zero. And however, at this level, the synergy between Joe's partial and BIM solution during the construction phase of the workflow remains non-existent. So we are looking at the planning stage. Okay, at least they relate. The moment constructions, right? They go independently and they start to construct. And anything goes wrong, they say, no, it is shown on the drawing we constructed. As simple as that, okay? 
And this impacts performance and project progress monitoring includes tracking of effort, the cost, which is taken care through the 4D and 5D in the beam solution part. Okay, that's during the construction stage because you need to keep track. And then some mistakes, some errors. So you need to reconstruct and all of these adjustments need to be done. And then at the operations and maintenance stage, basic project data is shared with owners and operators during handover. So normally at level zero, what normally will happen is they just provide operation and maintenance manual as a hard copy, dump it to them and say, hey, this is the operation maintenance manual. You take over the building, you maintain on your own. Okay. So if you look at the uh, level one, where you are able to calculate, so I'm looking at this chart. So this chart has uh, two separate area. One is project planning and delivery, which is the red dotted line. And the other black dotted line is the asset inspection management. So there's four stages to this. Stage one is plan and design. Stage two, you are moving to design and execution. Stage three is moving to performance and monitoring. Stage four is operation and maintenance. So if you look at level zero, yes, schematic design, project plan, all this was in silos. Now, when you move to level one, calculate and analyze entities and geo-reference attributes can be captured, which is also happening during the planning stage. Construction documentation is put in place because you already have information availability and then effort and cost tracking on the performance and monitoring stage, which is under the level one also. Then you're also looking at facility management and system integration, which is more into operations and maintenance. Okay, so again, this is at level one still. Level one of Joe Beam's maturity level. Okay, and why do you need to know all this? Okay, this is more into increased efficiency and productivity, as well as compliance. Because we don't want people to say, I thought you're going to provide this information. How come it's not in this drawing or not in this model? So that is where the standards comes into play. Okay. So when you look at level one is more into foundation project data integration. So at level two, now level zero, level one, now level two. Ah, this is more going to be boring, right? So level two, <clears throat> what are we looking at? Is the integrated GIS and BIM maturity model. <clears throat> Excuse me, where focus on project delivery management and a suitable information hierarchy is developed, such as remember the CDE, common data environment, so that you're always able to exchange information. The beauty here, if you look at B maturity, the collaboration also in level two. If you look at Joe Beam, also the maturity is in level two. So it's very much in line. The industry standards also is very much in line. Okay. And at level two, there is a significant integration of geospatial data and the application of GIS with BIM solution across construction lifecycle process. This is important because it's not only at one stage you use, you integrate, but then when you move to the next phase of construction or next phase of procurement or even implementation, you forget about the integration. No, this is carried all the way up to the operations and maintenance. And the project management plans are also hosted on the cloud web platform to facilitate multidisciplinary teams real-time access to project data. So if you realize the basic now, whatever you do, the moment you move into level two, you have no choice of keeping it with you. You have to be on the cloud because you would like to exchange information. But the cloud can be an established cloud by third party like uh, Amazon, Microsoft and all that. Or it also could be your own cloud, meaning to say, you can, you can also set up your own cloud for the project specifically, which could be hosted in a third-party hosted environment, which you can say, for example, UTHM has the cloud. So you have server room, you have connectivity, and that is used to access by the design consultants, the contractors, the owners, and decision makers will be able to come to the same cloud. So this can be two types of cloud. One is a self-hosted cloud. The other one is actually the third-party cloud that's already available like Microsoft, Amazon, and all that. And then integrated technologies facilities facilitate better collaboration, monitor control, value chain, and transition towards more data-driven decision-making. I think this is accepted and aware because 
the moment is integrated, the moment information available, your decision making process is going to be straightforward and easier. Right? You know that you are making this decision based on facts and figures. It is no more assuming that, hey, last time we construct that project, macam mana? oh, like this. Oh, yeah, I think it should be around there. Or no, no more guesstimate ready. Okay. And subsequently, companies can adopt into 5D, 6D BIM, advanced analytics and digital procurement and supply chain management for advanced project management. So if you realize, right, even though it's called BIM, even though it's GeoBIM or GIS, it all comes back to project management. It's all about managing projects too. Okay. And at the end, it's an integrated GIS and BIM solution helps achieve quality inspection on site condition with material, workforce efficiency, and project management. So the moment you step into the site, regardless you are looking at earth condition, regardless you are looking at structure condition, you're able to take your mobile phone or iPad or tablet, and then you're able to access to the drawings, the specification, the model, and look at it on the site real time. And even you have a comment, you don't have to take a photo, go back to office, write your essay, and then send across. No, right there on the site at that location, you're able to pin and say that, okay, this is the issue, did not follow the compliance specification. Please amend, please work on this. And automatically before even you take the next two or three steps, the next person in the process or supply chain will get a notification to start to prepare for him to work on the uh, disconnected specification or the poor work uh, quality or workmanship. So they will come to the site and they execute. So this entire thing, you don't have to pick up a phone to tell, send a WhatsApp over or send an email. No, it's all integrated and on the single platform. So anybody said, oh, you sent this drawing, is it? I didn't get it. Huh? Is it? You can always open an audit trail in this platform and see that when this person has sent, when this person has received or even deleted that email. So you're able to keep track of this. Okay, this is where the BIM uh, level, uh, sorry, uh, JoBIM level two comes in. So if you look at JoBIM level two, it's more into project programming and feasibility and then project management plan, and then based on the cloud. Okay, so you're just moving one more step. And then you're also able to do project monitoring real time because you already have all the information in place, right? And lastly, you can do predictive maintenance. So most of the time people see BIM or GeoBIM, all this process is going to help me during construction. Actually, the key benefit or the highest benefit, 60 to 70%, comes from your operations and maintenance because the construction of any facilities or infrastructure is going to take three to four years or even 10 years. But when you maintain, manage, which can take 30, 40 or some facilities, which is 50 years. So imagine if you do not construct in accordance, you do not capture all the information properly, accurately, you are not able to maintain. And for this maintenance, you cannot be telling that, okay, I think it's already, uh, there is a, a pothole, I'm just going to resurface. Or oh, that building, there's some crack, or oh, just going to repair. If you're going to do uh, what you call repair maintenance work, it's going to reduce the quality and it's going to increase the cost because the moment you see a pothole, you need to mobilize a subcontractor team. They need to bring with the machine. Imagine if you need to do this at ad hoc, all of this increase the cost of the rectification work or repair work. But with predictive maintenance, you are able to study because predictive is based on facts and figures, based on data. So they know that lifespan of the light bulb is how many hours. Don't wait until it's burned. Go and change. And then when you want to change, you already know you have a maintenance schedule to tell that this need to be changed or maybe from the entire building or that entire facilities, there's 100 light bulbs. And you already know based on the maintenance pattern, month number three, you need to change 50 lights. So in your store, in your space, you already purchased the 50 lights two months back or one month back rather than purchasing today and installing it tomorrow, which will increase the cost, right? So because you're able to do this predictive and you already have a schedule in place, 
your cost is also reduced because you have volume, you can demand for a better competitive price. That's on the fixtures. How about roads? You also can do predictive analytics and analytics based on the load. You have two lanes, the heavy vehicle always on the left lane. So you know that after certain number of vehicles have gone with the sensors and also the braking speed or the uphill or at the curve or downhill, you are able to do predictive in terms of where I need to resurface, how many meter I need to resurface, what is the thickness I need to resurface. So I'm able to do this predictive maintenance, which is also again going to bring down the cost. Okay, so these are all the value that most of the time people will not realize because we are always want to get things fast. So we always think, okay, I want to get these things. Why? No, like my boss asked me to go into Jobim. So I need to do Jobim. But what's the value? No, no, that one later. Let's get Jobim. At least I achieve my KPI first. No. So the moment you realize and analyze further and further, you realize you are doing a good value globally to the world, actually. Okay. So when you move to level two, you are able to do predictive maintenance, okay, which is the key. So now level three is the advanced model of an integrated GIS and BIM solution. So if you remember in BIM, when it comes to level three, is open BIM. That means you don't have to look at technology. It's all open. It's on the cloud. You are able to exchange with no barriers. At this level, the project team can control, track, and monitor multiple projects from project concept conceptualization all the way up to the handover. And this advanced beam in terms of like 5D, which is cost and 6D sustainability and facilities and asset, is also used alongside with the GIS for integrated project delivery to achieve sustainable project outcomes, including reduced project cost and duration, and as well as increased productivity because you are not wasting time. Oh, just now I was at the site, but I forgot to take photo of this defect. I forgot to check on these uh, constructed uh, facilities. Then they go back again. Then they take photo. They come back to their site office and then start to uh, put on an email, put on a document, put some description and comment, and then send it across. The guy on the other side, because by the time this person went to the site for the second round, came back, it's already 60, 6.30 or 7 o'clock. The other guy only going to look at it next day. So you lost time and effort. And also the hassle of back and forth reviewing right so all of this is totally taken off because you have real time accessibility to the information that you use okay so at this level owners operators and other team members can create an efficient flow of data for a collaborative approach using integrated gis and beam solution okay and of course stakeholders can simulate project strategizing sequencing and scheduling and risk assessment in terms in forms of common dashboards and manage their project portfolio. So you can take this further. Okay, so the level three comes into you have 5D cost and uh, also, uh, sorry, uh, time and cost, which is the 4D and 5D for the design and construction planning. And then you also can do tracking, okay, design, construction, and coordination tracking. Then you move into performance and monitoring where the construction progress with field issues entry and management remember just now you walk to the side then you think hey there's a problem here work quality is bad all of this normally is photograph fill up a form right so it's no more that it's a life real time excuse me and then during operation and maintenance you also look at virtual inspection dashboard with real time capture live view so if you have cctv in place so I, i'm referring to the level three of the operation maintenance, right? So if you have a CCTV or camera installed, you're able to have live feed on in terms of the facilities condition, the areas, the situations there. So that also help in terms of maintenance. Okay, so this is the level three. So, okay, so looking at the, just one second, this is hiding. Okay, so looking at the project portfolio management with integrated GIS and BIM solution, it enables project owners to manage data documents from different project teams and accurately with accurately map risk and cost. Okay, so with this, if you look at it, simple. I think as of now, you already clearly understand Joe BIM brings a value. Okay, that's a benefit because 
all the information it's on a centralized single place i can access but again by doing this there will be a biggest question mark how secure is this am i exposing everything to everybody so when it comes to the cloud computing or the cloud storage or cloud accessibility it's always based on security profile based on the roles and responsibility of a person who accessing to the cloud they are only entitled to do certain rights or certain rules only if the person is at the position of only view your coin only view uh, the person can also do amendments or rejections or even participate in the workflow that person can do rejections or approving or reviewing or even putting up a comment so it is always secure based on roles and responsibility okay <clears throat> so as an integrated gis and b maturity so you can look at the plan and design design execution uh, performance and then operations as what we show on the chart just now okay so now the value oh panjang lebar tadi baru nak masuk value okay <clears throat> the most important i think i'm just taking you guys step by step so that it's clear and and if you need more information definitely go back to uh, dr penel and also can come back to us we can always share if it's needed we can also do another session not an issue okay so when you look at joe beam's adoption value so at high level from all the bits and pieces that i've explained for almost 1 hour and making you guys bored so this is where we collaborate so you can collaborate into the services provide across complex project so simple you want to imagine this instead of me explaining bits and pieces look at it as a smart city every single component that built on this earth or at this area has information and the information up to the last level of maintenance that means if someone have serviced the account that also is captured 100% all on digital and you have full accessibility and when it comes to emergency you can even pick up your phone and say emergency exit it will give you a virtual tour of you to go down from emergency from which level to which level so it has it has that capability and whether people have utilized this uh, i mean to their emergency level there's very few but the awareness have started so people are utilizing see the moment you have information you want to do more once you have that information you achieve one objective or one uh, functions then you want to do more this is human we always want to do more and more finally what happens we get into a car which i think some of you have also seen the car will drive yourself you just going to read or just listen to music and you reach the destination once you step in the sensors will pick up you are supposed to go to which floor which door supposed to open and then once you enter that uh, i mean that unit or facility the light supposed to be on the door supposed to be on every single thing is been automated so eventually we're going to live like robots now anyhow right <laughs> okay so that is where the connected environment so there's also another video The systems that manage and deliver our world's most critical resources and essential services are undergoing a transformation. With the combined power of geospatial technology, building information modeling and interactive 3D, digital twins are being used to model, manage and simulate everything, from single facilities to large natural systems and even entire cities. Digital twins are being used in the management of modern networks to better visualize impacts of population growth and changes to load demand on distributed energy resources. With aggregated BIM information, digital twins are detecting conflicts and safety issues in virtual design and construction. City planners are using digital twins to simulate the shape of a new building, visualize changes in a planned highway. or enhance resilience with a better understanding of the impacts of climate change abstracting and modeling with digital twins offers a means to improve business processes reduce risk optimize operational efficiencies and enhance decision making with automation to predict future outcomes as virtual representations of the real world Digital twins are even able to represent relationships and behaviors enabling us to recognize and address
and social inequity. And location technology is at the heart of it all, uniting an ecosystem of capabilities and applications that support holistic and collaborative approaches to managing resources, assets, and infrastructure. Everything has a location, every sensor, every asset, every network. Location provides the shared context that is key to creating relationships. With its cutting edge modern GIS platform and extensive partner network, Esri, the leader in location technology, is laying the foundation for the creation, visualization, and analysis of digital twins. Capture, model, and integrate data from end to end. Manage asset attributes and behaviors throughout the entire life cycle. Streamline workflows across shared systems and information models. With an ARC GIS technology-based digital twin, operations managers and staff share a common reference system, location, to find and monitor assets within a rich, 3D, spatially accurate environment. With the ability to capture, manage, and process imagery, ArcGIS turns essential information sets into insights, assets, systems, models, and behaviors enriched with spatial context comprise a robust digital twin that connects people, organizations, and communities, improving communication and supporting a smarter, more sustainable world. Esri's geospatial technology empowers customers with holistic digital representations of environments, assets, networks, and cities to understand, optimize, and predict performance. Okay, so I think that's given you some idea overall of whatever that uh, we've been going through from beginning. <clears throat> so the benefit of GeoBeam, so with the integrated information, which is uh, GIS and Beam, you allow and you are able to access to the digital information. And the key here is the digital twin, okay, with information in place. And then let's move into the uh, sustainable project delivery. So most of the time you look at it, okay, I do all this, but how far it is sustainable? So if you look at the sustainability of all of these informations, so you look at stakeholders participating on geospatial world survey. So based on the survey information, so what I'm showing here, all this chart and data is based on the geospatial world survey information gathered, okay, based on number of participants and the percentage. So if you look at the design services, it's about 46%. It gives you a value and benefit for the design services, okay, at the highest. And at the moderate level, it's about 39% at the design services. So, but if you look at construction services, right, because I already have accessibility of all this data, which is the existing ground condition or even the survey information, right, I'm able to make better decision, better constructive uh, uh, method. So based on the construction services, it's about 75% high impact on this benefit, which is the prime benefit. And this is very much into sustainable project delivery. So I'm able to capture this and execute further and sustain for the performance and project. And at the owner and operator is about 42% is a high impact. So if you look at it, how this was managed or even drive. So first, they looked at about 75% of the respondents among construction services indicates that a high level of benefit can be achieved by integrating GIS and BIM solution in terms of enhanced ability to consider environmental and social impact. Okay, so based on that, this is the record or the facts and figures actually explaining to us. So according to this, what is the prime benefit? Enhance ability to consider environmental, social impact and reduce material usage and increase project resiliency. See, the material usage is always the wastages not calculated. Ah, never mind. Normally we buffer 6% wastage, 8% uh, wastage, wastage. But imagine if you're able to pro, uh, provide efficiency and productivity and re reduce the wastages, definitely your profit of 10% is going to be increased further, right? So that is another uh, key here. Then if you look at reduced material usage, specific to reduced material usage, where it's about 50% of the responses coming from construction services professionals indicates that integrated GIS and BIM solutions can help achieve a high level of benefit in terms of reduced material wastage. 
This is the second key. Okay, reduce material usage. See, during construction, it's about 50%. Okay, third, increase project resiliency. 60% of the respondent among construction services indicated that GIS and BIM solution achieve high level of benefit in terms of increased project resi resiliency, where in construction stage alone is 60%. So if you look at it, operation and maintenance or owners and operators is about 32%. And each time I repeat this, right, we always have to think design services, how much it's going to cost. Construction services, how much it's going to cost. Owners and operators is the biggest chunk of money need to be spent. Right. So if 32% that is already far beyond the design services and construction services value that they are getting from the construction value itself or the maintenance value. And then, of course, finally, it will improve process and outcomes because you are already having the information, collaboration is there, communication is there. This will reduce overall project duration. Design services itself is about 57%. So meaning to say, you'll be thinking, I, I thought it's supposed to reduce overall duration from construction. But indirectly, when you reduce your design stage itself, because you already settle clashes, yeah, your construction methods, the method statement, all of that has been addressed during design stage, your construction becomes smoother and easier to sail it through. Okay. And then if you look at reduced total construction costs, is about 42% coming from owners and operators. Okay. Where you can see, because there's no uh, double handling, redundancy of work, wastages and all that, costs definitely going to go down. And then faster plan approval and permits. Because you have full visibility and you are aware of what will be constructed, what is the method, because simulation can be done. So the approval also have a full visibility. So the approval is faster. They don't have to come back and say, I don't understand this. Can you provide this detail? Can you provide that section, this plan view for me to make decision? You don't have to. You have complete robust information for them to make the decision. Okay. And also the approval. So this improved process and the outcomes and project risk reduction. So now you cannot be thinking, oh, I didn't see this risk is coming anymore because you are able to anticipate because the predictive is there. Analysis is there. So the prime benefit more into the project risk reduction. 56% during design, construction about 57, and owners and operators is about 56%. Okay. And then the risk reduction continued further. Ability to manage project complexity and also reduce conflicts, changes, field coordination problems. Because most of the time, what happens? The moment I go to site, ah, HQ will do whatever. At site, we do our way. So I can reduce the conflicts and changes and also the field coordination because my handheld device already so powerful for me to execute my work and collaborate with my issues. Okay. And then organization benefit. Now we are coming back to the organization, the organization itself. Win rates, persuade new works. I'm able to win more projects. I'm able to be more profitable because I have efficiency and productivity in place in my organization. And the highest value is during design services because I don't have to have 100, 200 people to manage these designs. I can do more project with less people. I can still do lean construction now. And then further improve client satisfaction because the client already have full visibility. So if you look at the surprise here, 86% client satisfaction comes from construction stage. So previously they say, oh, you showed me the other day the color printout. Oh, that is how it's going to be, right? So when you go on the mock-up unit, then say, oh, this is not the one. So you need to redo, you need to get the material, deploy the resource, all of these skills, a lot of satisfaction and time, right? So now 86% comes from the client satisfaction during the construction phase itself. And additional services, customer support and training during design stage is about 72%. So last video. So this one, there's no sound, no explanation. Just to give you the collaboration, this, just to give you a high idea of what are the problems. Okay, so you're using the manual way, you take paper, 
So now it's integrated. Whatever changes, real time, you're able to see the impacts on the model and the combination of the uh, GIS and also BIM. So that gives you a full visibility. One place you change, the other side also there are changes. And this is applicable for any facilities, hospitals, building, roads, rail. Okay, so the final benefit on GeoBeam, so if you look at it overall, and then the trend towards sustainability. Oh, sorry, I An thought ever that was expanding the last video. world relies on infrastructure to drive productivity. This is to show about the ROI, return of investment. This places based a on heavy burden on assets underpinning our built environment and presents us with a unique set of challenges. Disparate information, disconnected workflows, and a lack of interoperability all create frustration and delays for those who need efficiency and connectedness the most. Over the last several years, Autodesk, an industry leader in design and engineering, and Esri, the leader in location intelligence, have formed an alliance to build integrated solutions that change the way you and your teams work. We started by connecting our customers to our two worlds through desktop tools. But as the way we work changes, we're also providing new digital workflows through cloud integration. Our technologies help accelerate your digital transformation, making collaboration and project delivery easier. Whether you're designing a new road, building a dam, or managing assets. By understanding where tomorrow's challenges may impact physical assets, you can build resiliency in your infrastructure projects. And you can continue to accomplish optimal outcomes with less risks, increased quality and efficiency, while leveraging the core tools you already know. We are constantly investing in the solutions you need to be successful today and tomorrow. Bringing together the best of BIM and GIS, we can unlock digital opportunities and innovation that bolster your resilience against disruption. Let's continue to change the way in which the industry works to provide better outcomes. Esri and Autodesk Integrating the worlds of location intelligence. Okay. So you go into the return of investment of GeoBeam. So if you look at GeoBeam solution, first of all, on the average design time safe is about 22.2%. Okay. This is taken from GeoBeam market in AC industry report 2020, Joe's partial world. So if you look at the average time on the design safe is about 22.2%. And the large project, which is more than 10 kilometer area, uh, and also the number of projects is about 30 projects, is about 28.3%. Smaller project is about 22, and the bigger project is about 28%. So you know on average is about 20 to 25%. You already save in terms of design time, average, right? Then if you look at the construction time save, 45 days for a smaller project, okay, compared to the larger project is about 90 days, which is three months one and a half months to three months, average construction time save, save. Again, this is still on average, okay? And then you're also looking at cost, 5.9% for a smaller project and 13% for the larger project. Imagine 13% of 1 billion. So it's always goes back the percentage higher and also the project value. So this is the biggest uh, return of investment, whether it's regardless, whether it's a small project or the large project for construction stage. And if you look at the plan and design stage, during planning and design stage, you have, in terms of uh, uh, Joe Beam's uh, uh, return, so you can look at positive ROI in using integrated uh, GIS and uh, Beam. Positive ROI, they have about 65% positive ROI. And this very minimal that not sure is about 26%, not sure because... This is still new, so it has to be incorporated. So you're able to analyze geospatial data. You can also do project uh, prerequisite before the build structure takes place. So this is at the plan and design stage. At this moment, we don't have data in terms of exactly how many hours during design stage and plan stage can be saved. But if you look at the impact, the positive ROI, 
is about 65%, which means it's good, right? So the good ROI is there, but specific is it? Number of drawings review is reduced. Number of uh, uh, design development time have reduced. So that detail we don't have from this uh, World Survey report yet. This is as of 2021, okay? So if you look at construction stage, you so you have a positive ROI about 60% positive ROI. So what are the ROI uh, positively you're looking at? So you're looking at progress, construction progress tracking, and then asset and logistic management, decision made uh, based on the data driven, and then real-time uh, accessibility to the JS and BIM, both time and the cost saving by the contractor and subcontractor. And further, it's actually more into enhanced construction workflow and activities, which is monitoring like equipment, energy consumption, or even raw material wastage. Okay, so that gives you about 60% positive ROI. Now, owners and operators, boss, right? The person who spent the money, right? It's about 48% on the positive ROI, where you're able to track and monitor targeted intervention across AC project lifecycle. So you want to know that, okay, once it's handed over, I'm going to maintain and operate this where, how, monitor and track. And then enables quality inspection and quality tolerance identification in the early stage of the project lifecycle. Rather than you see, oh, I need to repair this, you already identify this during design stage and rectify this during construction stage, including the workmanship because you're able to identify data is there. Okay. And then third, if you're looking at it, helps owners and operators evaluate task status, productivity, and challenges, and as well as the bottlenecks. And then check plan work against actual work on site inspection as built. So you are able to see plan versus actual from the owner's perspective because the owners and operators, not the engineers. So they want to see, oh, you plan to do three floors. Oh, you have completed two floors. Where is the de uh, delay or one floor? How much time impact to my overall handover? Because that is important for him because he's the one paying to the bankers, servicing the bank, right? Then you also look at helps project stakeholders frequently conduct virtual inspection on sites to ensure compliance with quality standards and drive sustainable project delivery. Okay, so this is, this is more into the return of investment by a different owners or different stage in the project lifecycle. And if you look at the users, the Jobim users perspective, okay, that is all for the owners and players, but how about the users? So the plan and design stage project lifecycle holds enormous potential applying Jobim. So if you look at it, the beneficial accessing the site condition, identifying and drive optimal design solution able to be achieved, number one. Number two, in construction phase, you can use simulation of 4D planning and manage your schedule using Jobim. Number three, helpful in the post-construction phase at the project lifecycle, as well as extract and analyze stage, stage-wise project lifecycle data. So when you want to maintain, when you want to manage, you're able to do that. So this is the user's perspective on the Jobim. And if you look at the user's perspective overall at different phase, site selection, I can use map, satellite imagery, a 3D model of the physical site, land registration, and planning maps. So I know who owns this site, this lot. Then when I move to the structural design, I'm able to design model iteration, post-construction analysis. And when I use into energy design, I can optimize the energy. Then when I move to the next stage, which is logistic management, map optimal routes for delivery. Most of the time, oh, I need to deliver one machine. They just pick up, put on a trailer, they just go. So the time, the cost of diesel and all that is not managed. So here, because with integrator, you're able to see, oh, I need to check the map. Not to worry, it's on the same platform. I check what is the route. And then what I need to load, I know what is the weight because my beam model already simulated what is the, what is the weight of that object that they need to carry. Number three, they'll be thinking that, okay, but is my site congested? Is it really constrained that my tower crane cannot move or my lorry cannot come in? That simulation also can be done from the same platform. So it is easy. So this is always the reference to the digital twin. Whatever you want to do at the construction site, you are looking at the digital model. Okay. So that's on the logistic management. Then supply chain tracking. You're also keeping track of all the raw material deliveries and stocks. 
then construction supply chain management, visual monitoring. Then you move into monitoring and uh, sorry, you move into the hazard responses because when you are doing efficiently and productivity, there's bound to have constraint in terms of safety. So here you are able to also look at which are the hazardous area and the responses. So if in the event any unavoidable situation happens, disaster damage assessment is there, safety evacuation plan is there, in order emergency spatial models also is there. So you know that which is the exit route, how fast you can run, where are the routes for you to run out. So these are the things taken place. And then energy management, monitor and control energy consumption of a building and facilitate cross-disciplinary decision-making. And finally, facility management, create buildings database management and streamline data queries for efficient inspection and maintenance. So whatever repairs or maintenance you're able to do. So these are the three phases, plan and design, construction, and then operation and maintenance. So again, this is from the user's perspective. When I use Geobeam, what do I get? And what do I do, right? Then this is where the summarize, which is increased data, quantity, exchange, conversion, and then scope of development, which is the key, single source of truth, SSOT. So whatever we do, regardless, you call GeoBeam, Beam, JS, and all of this, you are want to refer to the same single information, which is called a single source of truth. Okay. And the final integration also involves technical workflow challenges that include transformation accuracy, semantic simplification, and geometric information filtering, and et cetera. So this is again coming from the users of the GeoBeam. Okay. So the project workflow. So what, what is the, uh, what do you call implementation of GeoBeam in project workflow? So if you look at implementing to a project, there must be some challenges given by the professionals, right? So the design service professional, 37%, not using. So it is not 37% using. This is reverse. 37% not using, uh, not use, open to exploring the potential value of GeoBeam. Okay. So the balance 63%, it's already adopting into GeoBeam. Okay. Now, the that is on the exploration. The next stage is evaluating. Exploration, one thing now move to the second level is evaluating. So 26% is not used it and not yet begin evaluating GeoBeam's application. Okay. So there's 70 over percent already adopted to this. So we are we at the early stage? No. We already reached a good maturity level that we should move in. And then finally, the active evaluation, because evaluating it could be six months, could be one year, could be two years. But actively doing it is about also equivalent to 26%. It's not doing it. Okay. So 80 over, sorry, 70 over percent already evaluating and could be at the final stage of uh, adopting into this and the change management. Okay. So overall, this is on the project workflow. And then if you look at construction service professional, it's about 36% not used it for the potential value exploration. And evaluating it is about 36% or so not used. And 18%, it's at the final or evaluation stage. Okay. So this is the uh, for the project workflow at the construction service professionals. And then if you look at owners and operators, exploration is about 13% only. So if you look at owners and operators on GeoBeam, is the highest. Because the potential value exploration already started. And also highest value in terms of evaluating and the lowest value in terms of the final stage of evaluation. So you have about 44% only at the final stage of evaluation. Evaluation. The rest of the guys already started to look at the potential. Okay, I know what is the value. I know what's the benefit. Let's explore. Let's evaluate. But the process of evaluation getting longer for them. Why? Because they are the paymaster for this, right? Anyhow. Okay, so this is just to give high level. Finally, when you reach all of this, where is the advantage and what is the data loss or information minimization? So that's the final slide. So I think we should uh, get any questions. I've taken, whoa. 11.50. Yes. Okay. 
<laughs> very compact, very good. Thank you so much, Yes, Kumaran. Yeah, Thank so you. I think uh, it is very, very insightful. And uh, we didn't, it's so, uh, it's a privilege for us to listen uh, and understand that this Joe Beam that you, you mentioned right earlier that it actually exists, but it was like all scattered. And now how Esri yes. managed to tie things together. So um, in, in, in other words, this is actually considered like a lean, lean uh, part of lean principle, right? Right. Yes, uh, correct. Wow. Okay, that's very good. So uh, maybe we can look at the questions. Yes, correct. Yeah. yeah, just scrolling there. I think uh, if where I stop after the CDE, how can integration of GeoBeam technology can contribute to achieve greater sustainability and infrastructure project lifecycle? I think based on the value benefit plus the ROI, you are able to see that single source of truth mm -hmm. and at a various stage during design phase you have visibilities and accuracy during construction stage you are able to manage the field information and also the design expectations and also during the uh, operation and maintenance manual throughout the life cycle that is where the integration of geo beams comes in and then if you look at the next question is there if there is an option as same or similar beneficial as beam what would it be okay if there's an option as same or similar beneficial as b oh this is a very good question but i'm thinking <laughs> similar like what, to what other solution from uh, apart from beam is it is that what you mean it's more similar beneficial. because when you look at beneficial of beam again is the process so what and where people have uh, captured or taken beam as a very big word now because it gives con or it contributes to a lot of benefits so if you if you go back to every single uh, phase or stage in project development life cycle you have processes in place if you go to procurement there's they call it integrated contract management integrated procurement management so you can also manage it in a benefit or similar but specific to beam because it's widespread from the planning stage all the way up to operation maintenance so if you ask me is it similar beneficial of beam i would say then project management completely mm. okay so again it's not the tool it's the process that drives this entire thing and then the next one please share the attendance okay <laughs> Danish. How can BIM construction data be well integrated with geospatial context data? Uh, can GeoBIM help? Yes, underground projects, yes. So the GeoBIM requirement or integration does not stop above ground. It's also underground. Mm. Okay, Whether the underground information is stored in the S-Build 2D CAD drawing, or you're going to do a uh, live ground penetration tests and map it again with sensors uh, and also uh, uh, what do you call uh, laser scans. That is a second method. Or you may be also doing pilot trenches of excavation and identifying the exact location and the pits. Okay, by, but by capturing all this, it should not stay in the 2D or silos information somewhere. That should be brought into the GeoBeam's environment so that the underground information is also used. And this is the key. Any development have to look at the underground information first before they construct anything. Okay. How might emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning further enhance the capabilities of GeoBeam in promoting sustainability and resilience in infrastructure systems? Very, very good question, actually, Danish. Yeah. This is the important subject, even uh, including myself learning where AI can come into construction. I'm also attending a few uh, webinars and so reading some material to see because it is moving too fast. Mm. Because if you look at chat GPT, just triggered everybody. So the mm. first question, any superior or any... Uh, uh, what do you call a uh, lead leader looking at ask the team 
Did you use ChatGPT to come up with this? <laughs> Commonly, that's already installed in our mind already now. See, so because it's taking so fast, so quick, so people are looking at it. So uh, how might emerging technologies such as AI or artificial intelligence, machine learning further enhance? Very true. And this is going to give a biggest impact because human, again, we capture the data now, we process the data, but it is still going to be stored somewhere. When it's stored, when you want to make any other decision, you're going to review back to this data and make the decision. Imagine your artificial intelligence and machine learning can give you with a split second mm. what you needed mm. and similar environment. So AI and machine learning going to take to the next level and the technology, including Microsoft, everybody already moved towards this. Yep. So people already talking about how AI can help construction. Mm. Yeah, because before this, maybe two, three months back, we were looking at smart construction, smart design, smart building, smart city, smart, smart, smart. Now all going into AI, AI machine learning into every stage of construction. So it's definitely a lot. Definitely, I won't be able to summarize and tell you this is where the area, but through and, and it's not far. AI and machine learning coming to construction, coming to planning, project management, all that, not far. Mm. Very close. Okay. Last question. Valerine from Valerine. Okay, what is the future of BIM in architectural and construction industry in East Malaysia? Is there like a development gap compared with Peninsula? Okay, the difference here, if you look at uh, what you call East Malaysia, there are pockets of projects in place, but massively done in Peninsula, even in Peninsula, it is not in Malacca, Mm. in Saramban. So you can see it is centralized in Klang Valley and then Johor and Penang. Mm. And it always goes back to the value people have realized and why they want to adopt to this. So if you look at government, even JKR to a certain extent, they have rolled out to Kelantan, they have rolled out to Trangano, even Sabah and Sarawak. But again, it is not all project, selected project. But eventually, in fact, uh, three months back, I think March uh, this year, we have completed this Pandang Hospital. Mm. Okay, so even a rural area hospital, but they use BIM. So, but again, it is government driven, but it's selected project only at this moment. So, mm. adaption is there, and the gap will be slowly narrowed based on the uh, what you call outcome or the visualization or understanding of the value. Because most of the time, yeah, I have value, but I need to invest. Again, it's come back to invest, right? So, okay. And then is there industry standard back practices on GeoBeam implementation that professionals be aware of, especially in East Malaysia? Okay. When it comes to uh, all the reports that I've shared, it's based on the world survey for GeoBeam, GIS, and also BIM. So this is the best practices. But Joe Beam's best practices, right? It is still not 100% matured like Beam alone. Because Beam has been here since 2006, 2007 globally, especially in Asia. So you have the maturity level map much more clearer. But on a GIS or the Joe Beam, it is just started. So that's why you can see the level zero, level one, level two, level three has been identified. But that is still enhanced based on needs and the requirement. Especially in East Malaysia. Uh, yeah. Also, it, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah, correct. Same. Okay, all right. Any more questions, guys? We have two minutes more. <laughs> I I was like very itchy, want to ask more questions, but I have to control myself because uh, we are <laughs> master tidak membenarkan, yeah? From okay, your perception, so... how far do you think that the AI will surprise the human intelligence, civil engineers mm. in the construction industry? I, I think, uh, in fact, uh, I, was, I was explaining this to my daughter yesterday. <laughs> we have to start to see which are the field this AI or machine learning will take over. But anyhow, humans still need it. Hmm. Humans still need it. But the way people have 
position or presenting AI and machine learning, right? As though that that's going to come, take over, and and what we will not have work. Yeah. So they always talk about the skill professionals, the white collars, is the most impacted by this because the time is faster by AI and machine learning. Mm. So if you ask my personal view, uh, it's going to add value to a certain extent, which need to be explored. You will be surprised where the value comes in because. If you treat AI and machine learning as a tool to help you to make decision, to do your work day in, day out, it's going to be a tool. If you think that's going to be a threat, it's definitely going to be a threat. So what we need to do, we need to enhance ourselves now to go further. So no going further, meaning to say, how can I use AI and machine learning to do my day in, day out work even further in terms of design, in terms of construction. So we need to explore that part of the requirement. Hmm. That's a very mature answer, I feel. It's like, I feel that overall, you are not being, uh, what they call it, I do not have the prejudice, because I think a lot of people have prejudice towards IR4 and, and how AI is like taking over us, Correct. you know? <laughs> yes, that's true. true. Hmm. So I think it's like, what the way you say it's like, let's pick our battle, you know, how hmm. we fully utilize the tool that we have right now. Yep. And uh, doctor, you'll be surprised by AI and machine learning, there's a new topics, new syllabus, mm -hmm. and new position is introduced to the industry. Oh, in the construction in fact, industry? Yes, even oh. in the construction, because they call it uh, generative artificial intelligence. Okay. Then they call prompt response analysis. analysis. Now you can see data scientists. If mm -hmm. anybody knows about data scientists now, that's the highest demand. When it comes to big data analytics, they need to hire data scientists. Mm. So the requirement, they will say, okay, you are a solution provider. You provide big data. How many data scientists do you have in your company? That is a key question they ask. So if you ask me, I never realized there is a such position called data scientist. Mm. So now they are going into all this different position, different roles, different requirement is coming up. Yeah. And it's very specific. Oh, okay. So all of us here, you know lah, what to do. Yeah. <laughs> For the masters ke or your anak anak, your your anak anak with data scientist later. <laughs> yeah, true. Actually, true. Oh yo. Okay. All right. So because uh we have really run uh a little bit out of time, so maybe we have no choice but we have to uh in right now. Right. Uh, many thanks uh to T S Kumaran and the team. Okay, we are really indeed very very privileged and thankful that uh, today um, we have uh, learned something that is not really in the market, how to say, not, not, not in the market, but it's actually pretty new, but new, yet yes. we can go so deep together with you. Yeah, so uh, before we end this, uh, maybe we can all on our camera, shall we? Okay, so it's a very, very good memory that we can... Okay, so <laughs> we have Sir Hairi there. <laughs> yeah, Sir Hairi. <laughs> Cannot stay you been, Yeah, you've been shadowed uh, <laughs> by the Sherry. YouTube background. Okay, yeah. uh, everyone, can you please on your camera? Should we off the spotlight? Can I on spotlight? I'm Daniel. Now off spotlight, go on spotlight. You'll decide, yeah, because both of us are spotlighted. Not sure whether the rest can be seen or not. Uh, okay. Uh, everyone can open the camera. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. I am precise. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Daniel Hakim. Uh, Ahmad Daniel. Right. So, uh. Once again, we are uh, on behalf of uh, DTHM and FTK, we would like to thank Bina and uh, especially TS Kumaran for spending this time with us. Uh, we know that actually your schedule is super packed, huh? <laughs> but you still give us this time and of course the whole no. preparation to prepare the slides. Right, so uh, please allow us to ask you and get your input again next time. Right, sure. so for the rest, uh, remember we have the last session and the closing session in the afternoon, 2 p.m. if I'm not mistaken. We have IBS talk. 